Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and today we have to talk about an update to a major AAA third-party Switch game, and why a particular part of this update, I feel, should become standard across the board with all multi-platform games. Now, of course, folks, we were talking about the big 3.6.0 update to The Witcher 3 on Nintendo Switch, and there's a whole bunch of stuff to go over in this update, and we'll get into everything, but the big point I want to talk about to start this video is about cross saves. As of 3.6, you can now use your saves across Nintendo Switch, Steam, and good old games. So if you have a PC save file, essentially, you can literally transfer it over to Nintendo Switch and vice versa. There's a little ca some caveats with this. Like if you have a modded save file, uh, if you transfer that to Switch, it won't work with Nintendo's cloud backup system because mods aren't really a thing on Nintendo Switch. I think that's just a given. It's not going to corrupt your current Switch save file. You can still do all that, but uh, you won't be able to save your PC one to the Nintendo Cloud. But then again, if you're transferring between PC and Switch all the time anyways, it doesn't really matter if Nintendo's cloud backup system works for you because you could just literally transfer the save back to your PC and just leave it there until you want to use it again. But this is excellent for people who want to play The Witcher 3 at home with the best graphical fidelity settings or have a long-term save file uh, that they've had sitting on their PC and and want to take it with them easily on the go. Uh, this is an amazing feature that really should be standard, if I'm being honest. And I don't just mean between Switch and PC. Honestly, in the age of technology we're in, the fact that we can't have cross saves between Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and Switch is absolutely baffling to me. Why in NBA 2K20 do I have to have different save files if I'm on Switch or on PC or on PlayStation or Xbox? Why can't it just be one save file across all systems? Same with Madden. Same with pretty much anything. If a if a gamer is going to purchase your game more than once so they have it on different platforms, why should they have to have different save files? It doesn't actually make sense to me. And this in general needs to apply to games overall. Like, Why are all the player bases not combined in certain games like Madden on PlayStation 4, Xbox, PC? Why is it not one player pool? Why is it separated per platform? Uh, and, and we see that some games that actually do combine everything. Fortnite, as an example, does a good job combining all the player bases. Although they did separate Switch out from home consoles to be combined with... Um, uh, what should I call it? To be combined with uh, mobile phones. But still, uh, in general, they could at least combine player bases. And to have this, this cross-save feature is an amazing thing. That I, Again, this should be industry standard. This shouldn't be like a shocking update. But it is because it's not. Um, so while obviously the future of gaming, we're looking at game streaming uh, with xCloud, Stadia, maybe with something Amazon's doing, I don't know. Uh, you know, PlayStation's probably got something up their sleeves as well. I have to wonder, why are we missing some basic features? Forget just cloud saving. We're talking cross saves across platforms. It should be a thing more often. So I'm glad to see this feature come to Switch. I do actually have a Witcher 3 save file on my PC that maybe I'll bring over. Although at this point, it's been so long, I'll probably just want to start the Witcher 3 over again when I finally pick it up on Switch. Uh, but yeah, that's huge. Now, in addition to this, they added a whole bunch of new things as well uh, in the settings. All of this essentially to put the how you want the game to perform in your hands. Let's go over those setting changes. So they added touch control support, which wasn't there originally. Uh, this is mostly for menus and, and, and the items, uh, stuff like that. You could kind of tap on things instead of having to move the cursor. Um, you added save file integration. Obviously, we talked about that. Added more text languages. So some regions now have more languages for uh, the text part of the game. They added more graphical options. Added multiple performance optimization. Fixed various visual and functional bugs. Various gameplay and crash fixes as well. So when you think about that, what they did is they took what people were already doing with the game with modded switches, which is enabling different settings that are there underneath the surface and, and just putting that in the power of the user. So things like being able to, to sharpen the game or unlock the frame rate or um, just, just try to do different things with the game to get it to where you want to be. We actually saw Digital Foundry put a recent video about what they can do with it. And while we're not talking about overclocking the Switch in this case, you can mess with settings. And uh, now more options is better. You can basically get better performance if you want. Or you can sacrifice some FPS to get a higher frame rate. 
Um, so th there's just a lot to consider, uh, and I'm glad they're adding this in here. Again, just like the cross-save feature, I think this needs to be an option in more cross-platform third-party games. You know, put the power of graphical settings in the hands of the users. They already do it on gaming PC. Like gaming, you know, when you game on PC across the board, you can have all these different settings you can mess with. Why they don't let you have that on Switch? Obviously have the base setting and then have, you know, maybe a couple other presets, but really let the users customize it the way they want. So if they want higher frame rate, if they want higher graphical fidelity, if they want higher resolution, put, let the users decide what matters to them. If they want to lower the draw distance and the foliage in Witcher 3 to get higher resolution, let them do it. Uh, so this is now an option. It's great. I'm excited. This is awesome for The Witcher 3 and Switch, which just keeps getting better. And it's obviously surprising that CD Projekt Red and their port studio uh, are still putting time into this, but it must have sold well. Uh, in fact, we do know that when The Witcher, because The Witcher 3 for Switch came out about a week before the Netflix series hit, and we saw month over month there was a 526% increase in sales uh, from year to year. And only 26% of that increase came from other platforms, meaning the huge boost from you know the Netflix series month is, well, the Switch version. The Switch version sold obviously very, very well, enough to still invest to make an update like this. And you have to wonder if this is going to convince CD Projekt Red to bring other games in the future, like Cyberpunk 2077. They didn't actually rule out Cyberpunk as being a possibility for Switch, even though they're not working on it at this time. But it's possible that, you know, that could come out this year on other platforms and come out next year on Switch. Uh, and while obviously, as a Switch owner, it's always disappointing to not get day and date games uh, to get them later, it's still better to have them than not. And you know, for if there's cross-save functionality, it even makes it, it, it a higher value proposition for consumers. Uh, so, and with CD Projekt Red already doing that with Witcher 3, if you buy the, the PC version of Cyberpunk, you know, if they release it on, on you know, Switch in the future, don't be surprised if they have cross-save functionality day one. Uh, so yeah, just more and more good news for Nintendo Switch owners. Uh, so stay tuned, folks. We have a lot to talk about. Um, this is kind of a new set. I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, it's not new per se because like I've done standing in front of this and there will be standing in front of it in the in uh, future videos as well but uh, there's just a, a lot of things I'm playing around with with my sets and, and how I'm organizing the studio. I'll put pictures of this all up on social media, probably Twitter uh, when it's all done. I still have the big desk over here that I'm reorganizing and moving things around but you know what I like this setup better. Um, already I have you know everything in front of me that I need I have everything behind me that that shows that hey I am actually a gamer for the people who somehow watch my videos and think I'm not hey guess what I actually have games like up there there's a shelf of games and books and stuff um, you know got some games right here and uh, not that that should ever be a doubt about a gaming youtuber they obviously care about video games and play video games but uh, for a while there just because I was going through some stuff some people just thought oh he doesn't play games like come on really um, anyways, I am Nathaniel Robojance from the Center Prime. If you enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like, comment down below. Also, um, I am happy to announce, uh, it's not starting yet, so, so, so don't get your panties all in a bunch, but if you made it this far in the video, I am happy to announce we will be doing a giveaway of two copies of Animal Crossing New Horizons, uh, but we'll get into that as we head into March. Um, because there's going to be two different ways you can win. One of them is going to be kind of a standard giveaway format with like, comment, subscribe. Uh, the other is going to be through a, a live stream, particularly a launch live stream of Animal Crossing. But we'll get into that in the future. I just want to kind of let you know that that's kind of coming up, kind of build some momentum, heading into Animal Crossing New Leaf, uh, and heading into, well, out of winter. I'm ready for winter to be done. So I uh, think you guys for tuning in. Subscribe, hit that bell icon, and I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, my God.